Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome back to New York, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. This is our special presentation of Big Data NYC. As part of Strata plus Hadoop World, every year we come down and do our show within a show. Uh, we've been going, Jeff, four days <laughs> four of nonstop coverage, starting with deep <laughs> learning and machine learning with NVIDIA. We had you know, the big, uh, big IBM you know, party on uh, Tuesday night, yesterday wall-to-wall -wall coverage. And, uh, and today, you know, more end to end. So, Sean McEwen is here. He's a technology solutions architect for data center and virtualization at Cisco. Sean, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks very much. Look, great to be here, and I really appreciate the time, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. So, we have been having a, quite a few conversations about what Cisco has been doing and UCS and some of my early misconceptions about what that was all about. You guys you know, changed the game there, but talk about your role and how it relates to big data. Absolutely, yeah. I've been uh, working here in Cisco for about uh, six years in the data center space and driving solutions in the big data arena uh, for most of that time. Um, we've been working with our ISV partners, Cloudera, MapR, Hortonworks, IBM, the, the, the you know, kind of the, the who's who in the big data space, uh, going back about that far uh, and building solutions together with our hardware and some of our software and, and theirs as well. Um, creating validated designs and uh, testing and, and uh, building uh, uh, you know, really solid solution products that our customers can deploy easily and kind of get into this new technology area uh, f feeling comfortable really with it. Uh, I think so many of our customers are coming from uh, that kind of traditional mode one world where uh, they've done everything in the one way for so many years and they need, uh, uh, I think, a little bit of guidance on, on how to move into this new space, this uh, big data world that we're in, right? Uh, the architecture's, I think, uh, different enough uh, that, that you, you really uh, have to take a different approach to building out these large clusters. Um, yeah, we, we look at a, a kind of classic Oracle or, or SQL Server world and you've got that separate compute and storage and uh, always having to you know, manage everything uh, independently, separately, and here we're building what effectively is uh, a supercomputer, right? Out of uh, commodity, uh, industry standard pieces. And you want to make that all work consistently uh, together. And that's, that's what we've been doing with our, with our partners. So I remember my first Hadoop world, Mike Olson came on, I was like, what's Hadoop? Give us a 101. He said, well, back in the day, you'd buy a Sun server, run in Unix, you'd, you'd take some Oracle licenses, and if you had any money left over, you'd start to develop <laughs> right. you know, applications. <laughs> and you and, did. And he sort of described <laughs> how you know, Hadoop was all about taking, you know, five megabytes of code to petabytes of, of data. Yeah. And that was sort of the epiphany of Hadoop. Um, how do the requirements of, of, of big data differ from an architectural perspective? What's the implication from an architectural perspective? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, if you, if you look at those classic uh, database designs, or relational database designs, where you've got that separate compute and storage, it made a lot of sense. Uh, there was a good reason for doing it. You could uh, independently manage the two pieces. Um, and when the data set was small-ish, at least by modern terms, uh, that, that was the right way to go, right? But when the data sets got big and when you were trying to address a significant portion of them in a, in a given query, in a given job, that old method, uh, it just didn't, didn't work anymore. I'd say, it was funny, I was thinking, my, I was talking to my, uh, my son the other day, and he asked me this question out of the blue, and he's like, Dad, uh, when, when people want you to roll down your window, why, why do they do this? <laughs> why, why do they make that gesture, right? And, 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 and I do, you know, like, all right, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, the, doing it the old way, right? <laughs> so, so you gotta, you gotta recognize when things aren't the old way anymore, and you gotta, and, and you gotta, you know, the different problem to solve, right? So now, the problem is, is really throughput to the data, like trying to drive, uh, basically get that data into, into CPU cores, into RAM, and uh, as quickly as possible. Um, and to do that, you gotta, you gotta get those CPUs near the data. You gotta get the, the compute near the data and scale horizontally rather than vertically. And that's what, that's what Hadoop did so well, uh, you know, and really revolutionized uh, the, the, the whole world 10, 15 years ago, you know, 12 years ago, something like that, yeah. So what's Cisco's role here? You're saying you're, you're building out architectures and reference architectures to help customers 
figure out how to exploit data. Talk more about that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, transitioning into that that mode of of managing systems uh, at at that horizontal level, uh, what what happens? You know, you you start building these clusters, and they start maybe modestly at ten or twenty nodes, but pretty quickly. It's, we've seen it over and over again. Our customers come back and. Uh, six, 12, 18 months, and they double and double again and double again in size. And so now you're dealing with this cluster that might be 50 or 100 or 200. We have customers with thousands of nodes. Um, and how do, you, how do you deploy that in a consistent fashion? How do you manage that in a consistent fashion? When, when you start to have something that's of that scale, all it, it's, you know, plenty of our customers have thousands of servers in their data center, but they're all doing different things uh, in, a, in a Hadoop supercomputer, you're, you're trying to have all of these computers work together to do one thing, uh, you know, different jobs at the same time, but, but basically working under one framework. That becomes a, a real challenge as they, as they start to scale. Uh, and so what we've done with UCS uh, is to essentially make managing individual physical servers uh, templatized. Uh, we, we have what we call service profiles, which allow you to create a single template uh, for, for any group of servers tens, hundreds, thousands of them, uh, stamp them out uh, in the build process so they all have the same network settings, BIOS settings, uh, uh, firmware versions, all of that kind of stuff. And then when it's time to, to maintain them, when it's time to uh, upgrade a, a particular component, maybe, maybe you want to experiment. Maybe you want to check uh, whether your workload works better with hyper-threading off or on or, or something like that. You can make that change at a global level across the cluster flick of a switch, right? Uh, and, and so doing that uh, and, and being able to manage that in conjunction with validating it against all of our, our ISB partners uh, is, is, I think, a key area for, for value that we bring to our customers. Well, as I say, we hear over and over that there's just a shortage of, of, of people um, to really right. get involved in here. And it's just, there just aren't as many as are needed. So to come with kind of a validated architecture Absolutely. that's put together with the right partners. So you, you remove a lot of that complexity. Yeah. You're giving them something to start with. And, and you can't, you can't, uh, I mean, if you look at uh, IT spend, right, it's essentially flat, maybe even declining on a, on a you know, year over year basis. Um, you, you, data is, is exactly the other, right? Data's going uh, exponentially up. You can't um, sca you know, add people every time you add a terabyte, right? It doesn't, or, or a petabyte, right? You can't, you can't do that. You've got to flatten that curve uh, with a management ca uh, capability. So uh, as a cluster grows, we're, we're trying to keep the consistency and management uh, straightforward and keep that curve flat, right? Uh, and uh, you know, adding on to that, you know, not just at a at a hardware level, we've been able to uh, build some uh, software management products. There's a product we have called UCS Director Express for big data, and uh, it it extends that not just to the the hardware itself, but it actually now communicates with our uh, ISV partners tools. So with Ambari from Hortonworks, Cloud Air Manager, MapR Manager, that sort of thing, uh, with Splunk now as well. Um, so that when we, when you use that tool to provision the hardware, it, when it's done building the hardware to the, to the spec of the reference design, uh, it will then start speaking to the, the appropriate ISV management tool uh, and have it do its provisioning as well. And, and it, the, the, now the software and the hardware know what each other are doing and we keep that consistency again uh, across the spectrum. So. I wonder if I could ask you, go back to the scaling question. In the early days of Hadoop, people would complain, oh, I, I want to scale, I want to scale a compute independent of, say, the storage. And they had trouble doing that. Is it still a problem? Are you, help, are you helping address that, that issue? Yeah, I, I, I think there is still a desire, and I, and I do hear this from customers, to uh, have some flexibility in uh, how, how the storage scales relative to the compute because I think the hardest thing for customers is sort of knowing ahead of time what the what the right ratio is you know I, you, they'll uh, do their workloads they'll do a POC they'll they'll guess as best they can but boy it's it's hard to know and even if you're even if you guess right six months later it's probably <laughs> wrong <laughs> six months later uh, you know the the rest of the the uh, you know business units have figured out that this is a cool thing and then they want in on it and now you're now everything's you know kind of uh, all your spreadsheets are broken right? <laughs> uh, so yeah we are trying to uh, uh, bring a more uh, and I, I know this term is overloaded but bring a more composable or, or, or um, flexible approach to uh, adding compute and storage to the to the cluster uh, we have a new product called the uh, C3260. It's a it's a 
if you get a chance to look at it in our booth, it's pretty impressive. It's this 4RU rack server. Uh, it's got uh, 56 drives and two servers in it. Uh, one, but you can configure it with one or two servers, and that's the key, is that uh, you can start with a, with a chassis that's partially populated, one server and you know half the number of disks. And if you need more disk, you can add more disk. If you need more another server and more compute, you can slide in another compute slot and, and adjust kind of as you grow uh, to, to accommodate. And we've got customers that are doing exactly that. Uh, so you mentioned uh, before ISV partnerships. Um, discuss their, their role, maybe name names if you can. And, sure. Uh, just what are they doing with this? Yeah, so I, I mean, you know, going back, and this is my, I don't know, I've probably been, I think I started at uh, Strata Hadoop World before it was Strata Hadoop World, uh, <laughs> you know, 2011, something it was like Hadoop that. World. So, just yeah, Hadoop World, just Hadoop World. Uh, I was there at the, the, the Hortonworks uh, uh, one when they announced Hortonworks, too, uh, when it was just, it used to be the Yahoo uh, uh, version of, right. of, of Hadoop World. Um, so uh, yeah, we've been working with uh, these vendors basically since their inception. Uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks, MapR, uh, more recently IBM, we've added into the mix with their big insights product, uh, and Splunk as well, from a, obviously less from a Hadoop perspective, but uh, uh, from you know, uh, data ingest for machine uh, generated data. And um, all of them have been just really stellar uh, partners for us. We, we bring their engineers and ours into the lab, uh, have, you know, sit down and decide what is the, the best configurations we want to uh, you know, offer to our customers, and then test the hell out of it. Um, and we've published, uh, there's a new uh, TPC benchmark now for big data, TPCX-HS. Uh, uh, so you're probably familiar with TPC from, from the old relational database days, but now they, there's an industry standard and a, and a needed one uh, because you know, there's all kinds of claims about how fast X, Y, and Z is in, in, in the big data world. So it's, a, it's a, a very public industry standard benchmark and we've published with, with all the vendors I was referring to there uh, and set uh, you know, records in, in each case. Uh, every time we publish, we've got a, we were able to put a new uh, bar, uh, move the bar higher rather. Sean, what's the gnarliest big data problem from an architectural standpoint that you know the industry oh needs to solve? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great question. Um, I I do think the, the 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 management of the systems at at large scale becomes pretty pretty hairy. Um, it, it's easy enough to build a system. Uh, on your laptop or a five node cluster and have it be functional and, and actually get uh, some good value out of it. I mean, get, you know, get some good results that, and this happens all the time. We see it, you know, uh, we'll, we'll go to a, a customer environment where they have done a, a POC on whatever they had lying around, right? Um, and build it up and, and, and show this incredible speed up over whatever the previous system is. Um, it's it's a it's a very different uh, animal to to take that five server POC and and build a 500 server uh, environment. So that's that itself I think is a, is a pretty big uh, uh, problem that I think we're we're solving reasonably well. Um, I think maybe the next the and you're seeing some of the, uh, the hints of it coming out. These new technologies like uh, well SSD is not so new anymore, but uh, NVMe and uh, some of the, the cross point uh, uh, memory technology that are going to be coming out in the, and, and becoming more affordable in, in the next few years. Um, I, I wouldn't call that a problem so much as a challenge to figure out how best to take advantage of these technologies at the right price point. And you basically want to you want to use the right tool for the job at each layer of the of the software stack. You know, use memory for what memory is good at. Use SSD for what SSD is good at, and so forth. And I think there's going to need to be some innovations in there to to be able to balance those resources appropriately. Yeah, because it changes the balance. It changes it the bottleneck. It right? does. The spinning disk used to be the bottleneck, right? Right. And, and, right. And flash comes in, and all of a sudden, whoa! It exposes the network, which you didn't really have to worry about as much, right? right? Because you had the disk slowing you down. And once, and once we <laughs> see the, 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 that uh, adapt, you know, the adoption of the disk, uh, SSD and, and NVMe technology, the, that pendulum's going to swing right back yeah, and look at the move, network again. Yeah, right? Move to your next and, point of failure. You know, right? <laughs> 10 gig is pretty much the standard at this point for all of these clusters, but as soon as, and we're already seeing hints of it, uh, we're already seeing some customers asking for 40 gig interconnects uh, at, mm. at the server level, uh, not, not just above, not just at the spine layer. Uh, so w I, 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 it's, it's the classic game in IT, you know, always, always hunting down that next bottleneck, and that's how we make progress, right? So, so that's, that, that's to, as you provide scale-out architectures, you've got to be able to share 
data. Right. So you're seeing we need fast pipes between servers now. Absolutely, and 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 it's it's always got to be at a at the right price. It's always got to be a price performance equation. You can't just say I want faster. Well, I can give you 100 gig pipes if you want them, but it's not gonna it's not gonna be cost effective, right? right? We we we've got to find that right balance. And but and by definition, if they're successful with the POC then they're going to want to do more, Absolutely. more data. Absolutely. The, the data from those sources is also growing at the same time. So it's more sources and the data within the source is growing. And now the application stack, as you said, other people, ah, I want some of that and, too. And that excitement comes, you know, I, I think part of it too is, especially in big data, so much of what we've uh, done in, in the la you know, the first part of this century. Um, that always sounds weird to me, the beginning part of the century. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of like the 20th century. Um, it has been cost savings arguments. Uh, you know, say we buy, buy this solution because you, you can do what you're doing for less money, we'll, we'll save you 20, 30 percent on, on whatever it is your workload uh, looks like. Uh, with these big data environments, they're, they're net new. They're almost always net new uh, capabilities to the to the business, and and that really that 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 creates that excitement uh, that you're talking about. You know, people, people, the customers come in and they somebody shows one uh, interesting POC event in the in the in the lab, and then the word gets out, and the the business guys are all over it, right? And they and they want it quick. They want it right then and there. So, yeah, absolutely. That challenge is huge for for all of our customers. All right, we have to leave it there, Sean, but I'll give you the last word. What do you, what do you want people to know about Cisco and big data? Boy, I, I, you know, I, I guess it's, it's, it's almost the, the kind of the flip side of the, um, uh, the, the open source software world, right, where, where um, open source is a fantastic movement and every, uh, our enterprise you know, customers are absolutely interested in the open source world. Um, and, and it's not because it's free. Uh, it's, it, free is, you know, it's, it's free like a puppy, right? Uh, uh, you, 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 gotta, you gotta watch out uh, for what, what comes with the, the uh, kind of the baggage there, right? And that's where, uh, you know, ISP partners like Cloudera uh, do a great job of, of taking what's free and, and all of the goodness there and making it easy to manage. Well, we're the other side of that coin on the hardware side, right? You can, you can build these clusters with, you know, like a stitch together a bunch of laptops and it will function, right? Uh, but you're, you're going you're gonna to be dealing with that free puppy <laughs> at some point. So uh, having a little, 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 little value added on the system. Puppies side, grow. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right, Sean, thanks yeah. very much for coming on theCUBE. Really welcome. appreciate it. Thanks for it. Appreciate it. Right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. We're live from New York City.